Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask Mr. Frank Dumas to come up here and start the evening for us. Thank you very much for having a seat. We're going to start here in just a moment. present 
that have had a hand in working with all these athletes and all the athletic programs here at Northeastern Front. I'd like to thank Mr. Turner for his support of the athletic program and leadership of our school district during the past five years. Finally, I'd like to thank all of you, the athletes. Your hard work and dedication is what has brought us here tonight. Thank you for everything that you have done in your time as a student and an athlete at Northeastern Clinton Central School. Let's give all these athletes a round of applause. Let's begin. Laura Bayshard. Laura, if you can come up. Laura is a, was a four-year starter in cross country, most improved runner in 2008, and most valuable runner in 2011. Captain of the cross country team in 2010 and 2011, and qualified for the state cross country meet in 2010. Was John, the John Herb, J. Herbert Scholar Athlete Award winner as a senior for the fall season. A three year letter winner in track and field, Laura Basha. Soccer was a member of the 2010 seven, Section 7 Championship and State Semifinalist Team. Section 7 Championship and State Semifinalist Team. Captain of the team and co-MVP was a CDAC First Team All-Star. Named to the All-State Team and was the John J. Herbert Scholar Athlete Award winner as a senior for the fall season. Four-year letter winner in varsity ice hockey was a member of the 2008-2009 CDAC Championship Team. Assistant Captain and CDAC First Team Defense as a junior and senior. Co-MVP as a senior, three-year letter winner in varsity baseball, CBAC honorable mention for catcher as a junior, was a three-sport captain as a senior, and was named the first ever Section 7 recipient of the NIAAA Student Athlete Essay Scholarship Program for the State of New York. Award winner as a sophomore, junior, and senior was the John J. Herbert Scholar Athlete Award winner as a senior for the winter season. <laughs> Rob Armstrong, three year letter winner in soccer, was a member of the 2010 Section 7 Championship and state semifinalist team. Named to the Division II All-Star Team in 2009, to the Division I All-Star Team in 2010, and named MVP of the CBAC as a senior. Named Team MVP all three years. Three-year letter winner in basketball, was a member of the 2008-2009 and 2010-2011 CBAC and Section 7 Championship teams, and was named a Division I All-Star in 2011-2012. 
was team MVP of the 2011-12 season, was awarded the IABO Referees Association Scholarship in 2012, and was the John J. Herbert Scholar Athlete Award winner, winner as a senior for the winter sports season. Three-year letter winner in baseball, a one-sport captain as a junior, and three-sport captain as a senior. Jacqueline Barcombe. Two-year letter winner in volleyball. Congratulations, Jacqueline. Megan Bayshard. Two-year letter winner in volleyball. Congratulations. Courtney Boyer. Two-year letter winner in volleyball. Congratulations, Courtney. Dalton Castine. Lettered as a senior in varsity soccer, was a member of the 2010 Section 7 Championship and State Semifinalist Team. Three-year letter winner in varsity baseball, team captain as a senior. Congratulations, Dalton. <laughs> Alex Davison. Two-year letter winner in soccer, was a member of the 2010 CDAC and Section 7 Championship Team. One year letter winner in golf. <laughs> Victoria Dupree. Three year letter winner in volleyball. Named to the Hannes Hope All Tournament Team. One year letter winner in track and field. Three year letter winner in tennis. Was a member of the 2009 CBAC and Section 7 Championship Team and the 2011 and 2012 CBAC Championship teams. Congratulations to you guys. <laughs> Serena Foster, two-year letter winner in volleyball, four-year letter winner in cheerleading, was a member of the 2009, 2010, 2011, and 2012 CBAC Cheerleading Championship teams. Named Most Improved Player in 2009 and Team MVP in 2011 and 2012. Two-year letter winner in tennis was a member of the 2011 and 2012 CBAC Championship teams. Congratulations. <laughs> Landon Goslin. Three-year letter winner in cross country. Qualified for the state cross country meet in 2010 and 2011. Medal winner at the 2011 Queensbury Invitational. Named most improved player of the 2011 season. Two year letter winner in bowling. Named team MVP as a sophomore. Four year letter winner in track and field. Ribbon winner in the 2012 Van Dusen Invitational in the 4x800 relay and the steeplechase was named the Coach's Award winner in 2010, Most Improved in 2011, and Team MVP in 2012. Congratulations, Lane. <laughs> Bianca Grimshaw, three-year letter winner in varsity soccer, three-year letter winner in basketball, was a member of the 2010-2011 Section 7 Championship and Regional Finalist Team. Was named the Most Improved Player in 2011. Was awarded the IABO Referees Association Scholarship in 2012. Four-year letter winner in softball and was a member of the 2008-2009 CBAC Championship Team. Named Team MVP for the 2011 and 2012 seasons. Captain as a junior and senior, a three-sport captain as a senior. Congratulations. Katie Hoxley. Four-year letter winner in bowling. Member of the 2010-2012 CBAC Championship teams. And Team Sportsmanship Award winner as a sophomore, junior, and senior. Congratulations, Katie.
Lacey Holt. Two year letter winner in cross country. Four year letter winner in tennis. Was a member of the 2009 CBAC and Section 7 championship team and 2011 2012 CBAC championship teams. Named the most improved player in 2010 and to the number one team all stars for number two doubles tennis in 2011 and to the number two team all stars for number one doubles tennis in 2012. Congratulations, Lacey. Ben LeDuc, <laughs> letter winner in soccer, was a member of the 2010 Section 7 Championship and State Semifinalist Team. Four-year letter winner in hockey, was a member of the 2008-2009 CBAC Championship Team, named to the All-Tournament Team in 2009, and was an assistant captain as a senior. One-year letter winner in baseball. Congratulations, Ben. Bo Leduc, two-year letter winner in soccer, was a member of the 2010 Section 7 Championship and State Semifinalist Team. Congratulations. <laughs> Evan McDougall, letter winner in boys varsity soccer, was a member of the 2010 Section 7 Championship and State Semifinalist Team. Three-year letter winner in track and field. Congratulations, Evan. <laughs> Leah McDonough, two-year letter winner in boys varsity soccer, was a member of the 2010 Section 7 Championship and State Semifinalist Team. Four-year letter winner in varsity ice hockey, was a member of the 2008-2009 CBAC Championship Team, MVP of the hockey team, Co-MVP as a senior, two-year letter winner in baseball. Congratulations. <laughs> Janelle Menard, three-year letter winner in bowling, member of the 2010 and 2012 CBAC championship teams and team sportsmanship award winner as a sophomore, junior, and senior, MVP of the team in 2011 and 2012. Congratulations, Jim. Neil Miller, four-year letter winner in cross country, most improved as a freshman and team MVP as a sophomore, junior, and senior, captain as a junior and senior, four-year letter winner in track and field, most improved as a freshman and team MVP as a sophomore, junior, and senior. Captain as a sophomore, junior, and senior was the John J. Herbert Scholar Athlete Award winner as a senior for the spring season. Congratulations. Sir. <laughs> Lindsay Paquette, two-year letter winner in soccer. <laughs> Justine Rabideau. Four-year letter winner in cross country. CBAC All-Star as a junior and a senior. Qualified for the state meet as a sophomore. Junior and senior. Team MVP as a junior and senior. Three-year letter winner in basketball. Was a member of the 2010-2011 Section 7 Championship and Regional Finalist Team. Most improved player as a junior. Three-year letter winner in track and field and qualified to compete in the state meet as a junior and senior and was the John J. Herbert Scholar Athlete Award winner as a senior for the spring season. Three sport captain as a senior. Congratulations. <laughs> Courtney Rabideau, two year letter winner in soccer, lettered in softball as a senior. Congratulations, Courtney. Kelly Rogers, two-year letter winner in cross country, three-year letter winner in volleyball, CBAC honorable mention captain as a senior, four-year letter winner in track and field. Congratulations. <laughs> Brooke Seymour, 
Two year later, we were in volleyball, named to the Hannah's Hope All Tournament Team. Erica Sorrell, two-year letter winner in soccer, team MVP as a junior and senior, four-year winner, four-year letter winner in tennis, was a member of the 2009 CBAC and Section 7 championship team, and 2011 and 2012 CBAC championship teams, named to, named to the number two team all-stars for number one doubles in tennis in 2012. Paige Southwick, three-year letter winner in soccer, three-year letter winner in basketball, was a member of the 2010-2011 Section 7 Championship and Regional Semifinalist Team. Four-year letter winner in tennis, was a member of the 2009 CBAC and Section 7 Championship Team and 2011 and 2012 CBAC Championships Championship Teams was recognized CBAC Honorable Mention in 2011 and second team in 2012. Was first place doubles champion in the Section 7 Individual Tournament in 2010 and 2011. Third place singles in 2012. MVP of the team as a sophomore and a senior. Congratulations. Wow. Katie Trombley. <laughs> Two year letter winner in bowling. Member of the 2010 and 2012 CBAC Championship teams and Team Sportsmanship Award winner as a sophomore, junior, and senior, and was named Most Improved Player as a junior and senior. Congratulations to you. I just want to again thank everyone for coming this evening. Uh, this is one of the special evenings that we have as an athletic department and for you seniors. I hope this is a special evening that you will always remember. I want to thank again all the people that were able to work to make this possible. And, uh, oh. oh, I'm sorry. Cole Cooper. <laughs> Two-year letter winner in soccer was a member of the 2010 Section 7 Championship and State Semifinalist Team, Team Captain and Senior. Congratulations. <laughs> so thank you very much again for coming. Thank you for helping me out there. Everybody have a great evening, and I'm going to give this back to Mr. Dumas. Thank you. varsity 
and earned Division I and All-Conference All-Star status in her senior season of 2006. But it was on the basketball court where she would indeed make her mark both at Northeastern Clinton and at Lemoyne College. And then after that, she moved on. And I can't quite pronounce that team that she played for. She played professional basketball in Denmark. And we spoke this afternoon, and I said, I'm going to leave that up to you when I get down towards the edge. And you can pronounce that name and, and give us a little more information on it, because uh, you get quite a thrill out of me trying to pronounce it. You'll, you'll see. Courtney began her varsity basketball career as an eighth grader and would eventually top the list as the CBAC's all-time scoring leader with 1,909 points and be named the league's most valuable player in her sophomore, junior, and senior years. During those five seasons, Northeastern would win five league championships and four Section 7 titles. Following the 2006 season, Courtney accepted a scholarship to continue her basketball career at Lemoyne College in Syracuse, where she made an immediate impact when she started in 22 of 26 games played during her freshman year. During the next three full seasons, she would start every game for the Lemoyne College Dolphins. When her collegiate career was complete, Courtney would be in the top 10 list for Lemoyne basketball in 14 different categories, including first in games played and games started, third all-time in field goals made, blocked shots, and rebounds. Her 1,447 points places Courtney fifth on the all-time list of leading scorers in the team history. But more importantly, despite a demanding schedule of practice and away game travel, Courtney graduated on time and received her bachelor's degree in marketing and applied management in the spring of 2010. 2011, as a graduate student, she uh, was working on her master's degree in the business administration. And then, uh, 2012, like I said, she's going to continue on with uh, part of her talk and uh, tell you what went on in Denmark and, uh, and other reasons and where she's working now. And I think it'll, it'll be much better to come from her. But uh, we're very pleased when she accepted our invitation to be with us tonight. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome former three-time CBAC Most Valuable Player, CBAC Scorer Leader, Lemoyne basketball player and graduate, and also the team in Denmark and other things, <laughs> and uh, Northeastern Clinton alumni, Courtney Courtney. Best experience I could have had ever. 
there is, really isn't a bad thing that I could really say about going to Denmark besides that I was away from my family. And the city that I was in is called Obihoi, and it's spelled A-A-B-Y-H-O-E-J. Obihoi. Took me a, I was there eight months, took me eight months to get to say it right. <laughs> I came in, I was the second oldest player on the team. Um, they were very, very young. Most of the girls were 17 and 18 years old. But even though they were so young, all of them had played on the Danish national team. They played in European championships. They played in China. Um, I guess the Russians, the Chinese, the, a team from a different country, you name it, they played against it. And they have such great skills, such great skills. But it was a little difficult. I mean, I was 23 years old, and they were 16, 17 younger than my youngest sister. So it took a little adjusting to get to. But what I got praised the most for was not only my skills on the floor, it was my skills off the floor. Um, I lived with a fantastic host family. Um, to live in a different country and to be really thrown, I mean, I was there by myself. I was 6,000 miles, 6,000 miles away, um, and I lived with an awesome family, and they made the transition so easy. Um, it wasn't like me having my own place, which a lot of athletes, when they go over to Europe, they're given their own place, you know, kind of a perk of the contract. But right away, I knew that I wanted to live with the host family. I learned the culture. Um, we watched the Danish handball or the European Championships in handball, and it was awesome just to experience the Danish pride when we all sat in the living room and drank tea and watched the Danish Championships. It was such an amazing experience. And I created friends on the court and off the court. We lived in a community, or in um, Oluboy, it is very much like Ross's Point in Champlain. Very small, everyone knows each other. The athletic community is much like NCCS. Everyone's going to support you. If you need a ride, honey, I'll pick you up. I'll be there at this time. Just be ready. It's very, very much like home, and that's what made it really amazing. But I have such a great host family. We live in such a great town. and It's so safe. And I got to live in Europe for eight months. And the European culture is just amazing. It's so different than what we have here. It just is kind of really enlightening, and I feel like a little, a little older coming back. <laughs> I'm only 23, but I feel a little older having experienced those kind of things. So I guess if you get the chance to, absolutely do something like this. You know, obviously talk it through with the people that um, you care about the most. I mean, talk it through my parents. My basketball coach knew that I wanted to do this from day one. Um, when he stepped into the office, we were talking about, what are your goals? And I was like, I want to play overseas when I'm done. Um, I had hip surgery my senior year, so I had to have a fifth year. So we made sure that at the end of my fifth year, I was prepared, I was healthy enough to go overseas and play. And I was lucky enough to get a contract rather quickly um, and be with a great team, a great host family, and really experience such a great culture. So I guess the main point of my speech is um, when I was over there, I really knew no one. They knew nothing about me, and I knew nothing about them. So it was really important for me to leave with a good impression, as you guys do. Um, you know, I've talked in front of kids your age, I've talked in front of my senior athletic class at one College, I've talked in front of young girls who are sitting there staring at me thinking I'm the tallest person in the world. Um, but I, I kind of always try to portray the same message. And as you take these different paths through life, you're going to have high school, um, college, or if you're moving into the working world, like I just recently stepped into, um, you're going to have different paths in your life. And it really is one of the most important things is kind of how you leave one path to go to the next one. And what I like to say to you is that, you know, you're going to meet so many different people, but you got to remember where you come from. I've always really praised this, and I love where I come from. Um, remember where you come from. Remember the ethical values that your parents taught you and that you learned from your friends. Um, you not only represent yourself, you represent NCCS, you represent your family, you represent, you're going to represent your college, your employer. <coughs> it's just really important to not only think about where you are, but what the impression you're going to leave on other people that you meet. My college coach first saw me at Pace University as a freshman, and I knew that I wasn't kind of like the 
flaunt myself kind of player. I didn't really speak to the refs a lot. I really let my talent kind of speak for itself. And when we met my coaches for the first time, and when I left them in college, they were like, you know, you have a really great attitude. You have such a great family. I can tell you come from a great place. And I do, and I love where I come from. And as I was leaving Lemoyne, um, we went to a tournament up in Sweden, and we were getting ready to leave. And one of the moms of the girls on my team, or that I was actually coaching, came up to me and she gave me a big hug. And she was like, you not only have been a great teammate, you have really taught our daughters. You have taught our daughters how to grow up. You have taught our daughters how to present themselves to people. You came in knowing no one, and you leave, leaving us with the best impression. And they say I really changed their impression of Americans, so that's a good thing. <laughs> um, and my coach, my coach said that last year the American was really tough to coach, and you came in with such a difficult team, and it was such a pleasure coaching you, but I am sad that you're leaving. He and I almost shed a tear. I was like, coach, it's okay. You a little man here. <laughs> but, Again, the, it's the impression that you leave on people is really the message that I want to send to you. Um, one of my favorite quotes, and this is what I would like to end it with, one of my favorite quotes, do more than belong, participate, do more than care, help, do more than believe, practice, do more than be fair, be kind, do more than forgive, forget, do more than dream, work. Love your family, love your friends, cherish where you're from, respect those who help you along the way, Smile. Thank you. Yeah, I was gonna say you did a great job. Can't wait to see you in the gym. You did a great job. Can't wait to see you again. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Grotto would like to say a few words. Thanks, I know I need to be brief. Frank wants to go home and watch the Celtic game, so I'll be quick. Frank, in that light, when your head shaved like that, you look just like Kevin Durant. <laughs> A lot of people have said a lot of good things about what great athletes you are and what great kids you are, great people. I, I, I agree with all of that. You're fun to watch on the sporting fields and you're just nice kids all the way around. I, I think I'll just take a moment and comment on your academics. Uh, I don't know if your parents are completely aware of this. I know you know your own kid is smart, but this is one of the sharpest academic classes that has come through NCCS since I've been here. And so I think I'd like to compliment you on your well-roundedness. I know you must spend a lot of time studying, and you must spend a lot of time working on your athletic abilities, and I appreciate how well-rounded you are. And I encourage you to keep it up next year. In college, it's going to be a lot tougher, though. Because your parents aren't going to be there to wake you up in the morning and drive you to practice and make your bed and do your laundry. So I hope that you can focus and continue to be as successful as you have been. It's been a pleasure working with you, and I'll see you at graduation in a couple of weeks.
um, take time and do an assessment of what we can and can't do. And uh, I commend the coaches for coming up with uh, ways to help us meet the needs and the wants of the kids, for the athletes and whatnot. Um, every dollar that we bring in, we think about how it's going out and make sure that that dollar is for the kids and not necessarily just something that looks good or something that's nice to have. Um, a big expenditure was the um, support of the athletic um, weight room to help with the weight training. That basically wiped us out for last year. So this year we are regrouping and working with the teams to get an idea of what we need in the future. I have a great appreciation for um, the teams that have helped us or helped themselves, I should say, raising money. The kids and the coaches and the parents have done a phenomenal job in raising thousands of thousands of dollars for um, athletic supplies to help support the teams. Um, as I basically um, kind of briefly mentioned, I will be resigning as president of the Booster Club, um, just in part because I work at a job that requires me to oversee 40 to 50 volunteers. Um, and um, it's for a nonprofit organization. I have spent a lot of time, a lot of effort with different volunteers, but it does not mean that I will not maintain my roles and my work with um, the Booster Club. But I can't travel and do everything. So I'm really hoping um, that we have some people step up because I know there's a lot of great people that have um, kids in the athletic and sport program. Um, for your parents that have been doing all that you have done with seniors, if there's anybody out there that might think that they're going to have that empty nest um, syndrome because their kids are gone, that's a great time to do some volunteer work. And it'd be an awesome time to become president of the Houston Club. <laughs> um, because I the majority of the volunteers that are currently um, direct um, for hospice are retired. And um, whether somebody can work or donate 10 hours of their week to me or to the, our mission or one, it's, it's an incredible um, value to have somebody be able to help just one person. Um, if somebody can donate just one you know, one shift a week, that would help our boost the club. Uh, fortunately enough, next year our soccer program will have schedules back JV and varsity back to back. Um, that will be a great asset to our bank. Um, but you know, I mean, it's not just about the money. It really, really isn't. It's just it's about the challenge and the, it's a, it's a selfless, I think. Um, opportunity for people to get out there and help their kids. Um, like I said, I don't have a student that's in high school yet, so that will be next year. But I absolutely love, love, love taking pictures of kids and not in a creepy way. <laughs> uh, but uh, what I want to really do is that yes, I do take a lot of pictures, um, but this year because of my schedule, I could not have gotten all of these pictures put together without the help of parents and coaches and some student athletes. So I'd like to thank everybody that helped me this year getting these pictures together. Um, there is a picture for each of the seniors um, and team pictures as well that you um, feel free to take with you tonight. Um, and um, definitely it's a courtesy of Booster Club, which is just another little perk as well as um, this dinner. I'd like to thank um, Kim and Perry, my uh, co-officers for um, all of kind of getting through this year. It's been kind of crazy with the schedules and all. Um, and thank Josh for, or Mr. Erica, sorry, um, for, for helping us with the organization and keeping us in mind whenever we try to do something that we probably couldn't be doing. And, um, you know, until the volunteers themselves, really, um, we did a basketball tournament this year to help our modify basketball program. And then we had some volunteers that was there literally 12 hours um, just wrecking games and helping in the kitchen, helping um, with the organization. And, you know, we, we don't expect that, but when somebody's able to do that, that is just top notch and it's really, really appreciated. Um, I just want, you know, in closing, um, as we close out another school year and athletic year, I want to um, wish the students best of luck with whatever it is that you're doing and it is with hope that each of you can continue with your um, athletic endeavors in the future. And like Courtney says, you know, you can, you know, you, 
you can try something different. You know, I, you know, maybe maybe next year I'll try going to Denmark and playing. I won't for the 23 year old, but I probably wouldn't be in the gym either. Anyways, um, in closing, congratulations to all of our athletes that are here this evening. Live strong and live well. Thank you.
whether it be a teammate, a coach, a teacher, imagine this, even mom or dad, let them know how important they've been to you. A handshake, maybe a big hug and a thing. Seniors, good luck and God bless you.